Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief Program. Today, we have a mix of sports triumphs, heartfelt animal rescue stories, and weather updates to keep you informed and entertained. First up, China's women's volleyball team has secured a spot at the 2024 Paris Olympics, but not without stirring some controversy among fans. While some are thrilled, others are critical of the team's reliance on outside help and the coach's strategy. It's a fascinating mix of emotions as the team continues its Olympic streak that started in 1984. Next, let's take a heartwarming detour to Hong Kong, where Jean Leung, affectionately known as the Buffalo Whisperer, has dedicated her life to caring for injured water buffalo. Despite a successful career in construction, Leung's true passion lies in tending to these gentle giants, advocating for their protection, and dreaming of a thriving future for them. Her story is a testament to the power of compassion and dedication. Lastly, in the world of golf, Spanish golfer David Puig has made an incredible comeback at the U.S. Open, ensuring his place in the Spanish Olympic team for Paris. After a rough start, Puig's four birdies on the front nine turned his game around, showcasing his resilience and skill. It's a story of determination and triumph that will surely inspire many. Please stay tuned for more details on these stories and much more. South China Morning Post, Chinese volleyball fans were divided over the future of their women's team after they secured a spot at their 11th consecutive Olympics due to a series of fortunate events in the Volleyball Nations League. China's qualification was sealed even before their second match in Hong Kong, thanks to Japan's loss to Canada and the Netherlands' defeat by the United States. While some fans criticized the team and its coach, Kai Ben, for needing external help, others remained optimistic, recalling past glories under former coach Lang Ping. Zhu Ting, the star player recovering from a wrist injury, contributed significantly to China's victory over Germany, which solidified their status as Asia's top team. The team's consistent Olympic presence since 1984, including three gold medals, underscores their historical strength, even as they face challenges in maintaining their global dominance. Associated Press, David Puig, a 22-year-old golfer from Spain, faced a daunting task at the U.S. Open, needing to make the cut to secure his place on the Spanish team for the Paris Olympics. After a rough start with a 76, Puig rallied with a second-round 68, ultimately making the cut at four over par. His performance was critical as it allowed him to surpass Jorge Campillo in the world rankings, thus securing his Olympic spot. The tournament saw other notable players struggling, including Scotty Scheffler, who barely made the cut, and Tiger Woods, who missed it, extending his streak of over-par rounds in majors. Puig's journey to the Olympics was particularly challenging due to his decision to join the LIV Tour, which does not award world ranking points, forcing him to compete globally on the Asian Tour to climb the rankings. South China Morning Post, Jean Leung, known as the Buffalo Whisperer, shares her life story from growing up in a poor family in Hong Kong to finding fulfillment in caring for injured buffalo on Lantau Island. Born in 1952, Leung's family faced financial hardships after her father's business went bankrupt. Despite a tumultuous childhood marked by poverty and family strife, Leung found solace in nature and later in her work. She met Thomas, an architect, who became a significant part of her life, supporting her career and ventures. After retiring, Leung devoted herself to rescuing and caring for buffalo, earning her nickname for her unique ability to communicate with the animals. Her dedication to the buffalo, despite personal losses and challenges, has brought her immense happiness and a sense of purpose, highlighting her deep connection to these gentle giants. South China Morning Post Following a night of heavy rainfall, the Hong Kong Observatory issued a warning about potential river flooding. The torrential downpour led to the collapse of a 12-meter tree on May Road in the mid-levels, causing a road closure for nearly five hours. Police redirected traffic via Magazine Gap Road and Old Peak Road until government workers cleared the obstruction. 
the Amber Rainstorm Warning, issued at 6 a.m., was cancelled by 8.10 a.m., but the observatory urged residents to remain vigilant about river flooding risks. The forecast predicted continued showers over the weekend due to an active southwest monsoon, with temperatures expected to range from 28 to 33 degrees Celsius in the coming week. South China Morning Post, Murray House, a historic Victorian-era structure in Hong Kong's Stanley District, now stands empty, reflecting the city's struggling retail sector. Relocated brick by brick from Central to Stanley in 2002, the building once housed various government departments, the Hong Kong Maritime Museum, and later, retail spaces including restaurants and a flagship fast fashion store. However, the anticipated post-pandemic retail boom did not materialize, leading to high vacancy rates. Retail sales in Hong Kong have been declining, with a 14.7% drop in April compared to the previous year. Despite the challenges, Link REIT, the building's landlord, remains optimistic about future prospects, noting that international and mainland firms are showing interest in the vacant spaces. Telegraph, Mark Tucker, chairman of HSBC, has been knighted for his services to the economy despite the bank's controversial ties to China. Tucker, who has led HSBC since 2017, has navigated the bank through geopolitical tensions while maintaining strong financial performance. However, HSBC faced criticism for freezing the accounts of Hong Kong pro democracy activist Ted Hui and his family at Beijing's behest. Despite this, Tucker is highly regarded in financial circles and has overseen HSBC's best-ever financial performance. He splits his time between London, New York, and Hong Kong and is set to step down in 2026. Tucker's predecessors in the chairman role have all been honored with knighthoods. South China Morning Post Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has dismissed Western concerns about Hong Kong's business environment, emphasizing the immense benefits Malaysia could gain from stronger economic ties with the city. In an exclusive interview, Anwar expressed confidence in Hong Kong's resilience despite the challenges posed by national security laws and the economic impact of COVID-19. He highlighted Hong Kong's strengths in services and finance, particularly in Islamic finance, which has seen significant growth globally. Anwar also discussed plans to foster tech startup development in collaboration with Hong Kong and ASEAN countries, aiming to leverage regional strengths for mutual benefit. He noted that despite China-US tensions, Southeast Asia, including Malaysia, could benefit from Europe's decoupling from China. Anwar's optimism reflects a broader strategy to enhance Malaysia's economic partnerships in the region. Guardian, Chinese Premier Li Chong's upcoming visit to Australia marks a significant step in stabilizing bilateral relations that soured in 2020. The visit will focus on several key areas, including easing trade barriers, human rights issues, military interactions, regional security, and climate cooperation. Lee's agenda includes discussions on lifting remaining trade restrictions on Australian exports and pressing for China's entry into the CPTPP. Human rights concerns, particularly regarding detained Australian citizens, will also be addressed. Military tensions, especially recent confrontations between Australian and Chinese forces, are expected to be a critical topic, alongside broader regional security issues like China's actions in the South China Sea and around Taiwan. Both nations aim to find common ground on global security and climate change, with potential for renewed cooperation in these areas. Telegraph, on the campaign trail in Ferrum, Sala Braverman, despite the rain, exudes determination and connects deeply with constituents who admire her straightforwardness. The former Home Secretary, known for her controversial yet honest viewpoints, discusses her journey from a state school in Brent to Cambridge University, attributing her success to her parents' gratitude for British opportunities. Braverman criticizes political correctness and identity politics, linking them to adverse outcomes like increased knife crime and misguided gender treatments. 
she reflects on her challenges within the Conservative Party, particularly on immigration policies, and expresses frustration over the lack of action on illegal immigration. Despite her loyalty to the party, she acknowledges the difficulties in defending its record and the rise of the Reform Party. Braverman's candid approach and strong local support highlight her unique position in British politics, even as she faces threats for her outspoken views. South China Morning Post, Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is navigating the delicate balance of China-U.S. geopolitical tensions by prioritizing Malaysia's interests and fostering stronger economic ties with Beijing. In an interview, Anwar emphasized his commitment to Malaysia's independence and his refusal to be pressured into choosing sides. Celebrating 50 years of diplomatic ties with China, Malaysia seeks to leverage Chinese investments and expertise in sectors like manufacturing and renewable energy. Despite US and EU warnings about national security risks involving Chinese tech giant Huawei, Malaysia remains open to the best deals. Anwar highlighted China's willingness to collaborate and listen, contrasting it with past lopsided deals due to poor governance. He also addressed the South China Sea territorial disputes, advocating for bilateral engagements and ASEAN discussions over third-party interventions. Anwar expressed confidence in China's capacity to adapt and emphasized the importance of peaceful resolutions, particularly regarding Taiwan. The Toronto Star, bird flu has caused the deaths of millions of birds and numerous mammals, including seals, sea lions, mink, cats, dogs, skunks, foxes, and even a polar bear, but it has spared humans significantly. Researchers like Richard Webby of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and Dr. Tom Frieden, former CDC director, are puzzled by this disparity. The current H5N1 strain, first identified in 1959, has mutated and spread rapidly in recent years, causing severe illness and death in various animals. However, human infections remain rare and mostly mild, with only four cases reported among U.S. poultry and dairy farm workers. The virus's ability to attack different parts of the body, such as the brain in cats, contributes to its lethality in some species. Scientists are investigating how the virus spreads and why certain animals are more susceptible, with concerns about potential mutations making it more dangerous to humans. Public health experts stress the importance of vigilance and preparation for a possible future pandemic. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, when artist Jack Grant Ford approached ABC Classic presenter Ed Lubrock for a portrait, he had a unique request, to be depicted as a centaur. The result, Ed Lubrock, I am a centaur, deeply moved Lubrock, who saw his true self reflected in the painting. The centaur, a mythical creature from Greek mythology, symbolizes Lubrock's own journey of wisdom and self-discovery, much like Chiron, the wise centaur. Lubrock, a transgender man, publicly affirmed his gender in 2016 and has since embraced his identity, supported by his wife Charlie. Grantford's portrayal of Lou Brock as a centaur, complete with his chest surgery scars and a symbolic tattoo, speaks to his resilience and transformation. The painting was a personal project for Grant Ford, whose own child is transgender, and it stands as a tribute to strength and self-acceptance. Yahoo US, bird flu has decimated bird populations and affected various animals, yet it has barely impacted humans. This discrepancy puzzles scientists, who speculate that differences in how the virus infects species or the presence of specific receptors in cells might explain this phenomenon. Despite the low human infection rate, experts remain vigilant, fearing potential mutations that could make the virus more dangerous. The H5N1 strain, identified in 1959 and notorious for a severe outbreak in 1997, has mutated and spread widely in recent years. While it has caused few human deaths, its impact on animals, especially cats and foxes, has been severe. 
Scientists are investigating the virus's ability to attack the brain and nervous system in certain species, leading to higher mortality rates. The potential for the virus to mutate and become more lethal to humans keeps researchers on edge, prompting ongoing studies and preparations for worst-case scenarios. South China Morning Post, Cathay Pacific Airways announced a new policy to close all check-in, self-service kiosks, and baggage drop counters one hour before departure, effective June 25. This change aims to standardize check-in times across its global network, ensuring timely departures and a consistent airport experience. The policy includes exceptions for certain regions, like mainland China, France, and Vietnam, due to regulatory and infrastructure differences. Cathay encourages passengers to check-in online well in advance, with online check-in available 48 hours before departure for members and 24 hours for non-members. The airline spokesman emphasized that the new measure is designed to improve service delivery and ensure passengers have ample time to pass through immigration and reach their departure gates smoothly. The move aligns with practices of other long-haul carriers at the Hong Kong hub, aiming to enhance the overall travel experience. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.